Good morning. Welcome to our worship today. It is wonderful to see you all. And I know we have a few visitors. One is Pat, who surprised me. Uh, you live in Buffalo or somewhere out in Western New York, but I know her from doing several funerals for her family in Carmel. And so she and her husband were down in the area, and so she drove to, to see us today. And so we're glad to have you here. Uh, and oh, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten your name there in the back row there. Visiting from Florida. Sharon. Sharon. And? Corky. Corky. I haven't seen you in so long. I didn't even recognize you. Corky is from Meriden, and she and Pastor Ann and I were with a group that went to Nicaragua several years, quite a few years ago now, and my niece Bethany. Uh, yeah, I had shorter hair. Yes, I did. Uh, this is my pandemic hair. At some point, you probably won't recognize me because I'm going to get it chopped off and donate it to a, an organization. But uh, I thought that was you, and then, but you know, I wasn't sure. So it's nice to see you. So thank you. Uh, and of course, my, my family here in the front, uh, Lynn and Anna and Frank, um, and uh, and I don't know I don't know you well enough to know if there are other guests. Do we have other guests here? Okay, good. I mean, not good. We want guests, so <laughs> so we will work on that. Um, in our announcements this morning, uh, we have a finance committee meeting after church this morning. Uh, I will have office hours tomorrow between 1 and 3 and Tuesday between 2 and 5 for anyone who wants to come by. Uh, and we are looking for, now I, I don't know how much Pastor Ann spoke of this, but our churches are part of, of a, a, a group of churches. I've been calling a cluster because that's what it feels like to me, a cooperative parish. Uh, and we are with Cheshire and Southington and Wallingford and Higginham churches. And we're looking to build, uh, share ideas for mission and ministry together. Uh, and we had our first clergy meeting together and we're gonna have a, a parish um, council. And I need two volunteers who are willing to be part of that. Our first meeting is uh, coming up on July 26th. So if anyone is interested in being part of that and learning how we can get ideas from one another uh, and, and you know, it's spread out across a wide area, but there are some things that we might be able to do together. And I'm especially interested in the in the mission part, uh, especially with the church in Wallingford. And uh, and so, if anyone would would volunteer for that, please speak with me after the service today. Are there any other announcements that you would like to share this morning? Yes. Good morning. So a couple of weeks ago, my lovely husband announced that we were going to. Right? Yes. Um, we're not going to be homeless. That's a very good thing. We found a rental home. We're going to be moving next weekend. So I just wanted to let everybody know that everything's fine. What a relief for you. Yes, good. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> good. Any other announcements? Would you please rise and join with me in the call to celebration? God has called us to this place. What do you see? We see people who model for us God's joyous grace of all people. God has brought us to this place. What do you hear? We hear God's hope that we are able to see each person as our siblings. God has challenged us to open our lives and hearts to others. What will you do? We will do this. Welcome everyone in God's name. May it be so. And let us join in singing hymn number 451, Be Thou My Vision.
join with me in the opening prayer. O oh God, you open our eyes to a world which would sell the poor for the price of an SUV, portray the needy for a pair of fancy shoes, or haul the weak into Judge Judy's court. So come, God of justice, make us as vocal as Amos and the prophets of old. You watch us as we fill our days with endless work, as we keep a list of all our worries, never marking any off, as we get easily distracted by others' inactions. So come, creation's oldest child, make us as still as Mary. You take notice of how quickly we can overlook those who hunger for their empty hearts to be filled those who long for a family to welcome them, those who thirst for that relationship which will revive their souls. So come, reconciling love, make us as welcoming as Martha, God in community, holy in one. Come, make us your people as we pray and worship you this day. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peace and greeting. Peace, peace to any of you who may be online. Peace. You may be seated. And it happens when we just get distracted by a lot of things 
and, and can't focus, really. And so Jesus was reminding Martha that some, yeah, sometimes you just got to chill and focus. And especially if you want to follow Jesus, you have to listen. And so it's a, it's a good reminder to us, and, and as I said, I'll be talking more about that, that sometimes it's good for us to stop and listen. And, and that's true whether we're thinking about Jesus or, or God or listening to our families, listening to our friends, listening to the world around us, trying to take in what's going on uh, around us. And so it's related to what we talked about last week about our neighbors, listening to our neighbors and, and trying to, uh, to see, uh, to, just to hear other people. Because we live in a world that is very noisy, right? Uh, you might say. Um, because there are a lot of distractions, and especially with the internet, uh, that there's just constant, constant, constant news, constant noise, constant music, whatever you listen to, it can be, it can be a distraction. It can also be good, and it's important for us to listen to those things too. But to have a balance is really important. And so I'm going to talk some more about that. That's that's what this is about. It, Martha looks like she's embarrassed here, I think, because she's saying, oh, Martha, which I relate to. <laughs> Jesus and other people saying that to me. He what? It does look, yes, I know she is holding a teapot there and has some food there. Um, but they're there just kneeling before Jesus, and that's why Martha's like, oh, Lord, help me. Just chill, Martha, it's okay. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's an interesting passage, isn't it? It is very, it is very interesting. And so, so we're gonna, so one of the lessons for, for us today is to remember to try to have balance and to take time to listen. So let's pray about that. God, we know we can be very distracted because we live in a distracting world. And we listen to a lot of different things, and they're important things. But you always want us to listen to you and to have balance in our lives. So we pray that you would help us listen, to try to have some peace in our hearts, and to have a balance between all of the things that we have to do in our lives every day. We thank you for for Mary and Martha who show us parts of what it means to be a disciple. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be in this fall. Thank goodness for the trip. <laughs> this year As foolish, as prone to sin as we are. Every page, every story reveals to us our brokenness. Yet every page, every story tells us of the one who longs to make us whole. Let us confess our sins and clear the way for God's reconciling love to work within us. Please join me as we pray. In the mirror we call scripture, revealing God, we see ourselves for who we are and are not. We whine about those who are not doing what we think they should and ignore our failings. We speak words which nibble away at the life in our family and friends. We step over the poor on our way to get more and more, ignoring their needs. Forgive us, reconciling love. 
sit us down at Jesus' feet so we may learn the balanced life you intend for us. Then, and only then, we can set aside our grudges to offer our gifts to our neighbors. We can stop licking at our hurts to bring healing to others. We can reach out and welcome our sisters and brothers, even as we have been welcomed into your heart through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us now each lift our own silent prayers before God. Christ Jesus comes to reconcile us to God so we can be reconciled to one another. Recreated in God's image, we are made whole. When we are in Christ, everything becomes new. Our past is just that, our past. Do you really believe this, that your past is done and you are a new person? If so, go out and reflect it in your life. Thanks be to God, we will go forth and live as reconciled people. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer for illumination. Speak to us, O God, and help us to find meaning for our lives in these ancient words. Bless us with your wisdom, we pray. Amen. Please join with me in singing from The Faith We Sing, the Black Song Book, number 2128, Come and Find the Quiet Center.
seated. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. This is the new, re new revised version, standard version, updated edition. And this is about how Jesus visits Martha and Mary. Now as they went on their way, they being Jesus and the disciples, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I am distracted by many things. I'm trying to restart the live video. I don't know if any of you are on Facebook. Um, the, the live stream here, as some of you probably know, the signal is not very good in here. I can't get the, wire, the wireless at all, and the, my data doesn't like it. Can't. These are very thick walls. So I know Pastor Ann started to work on trying to get the place wired, and we'll continue trying to do that. But um, in the meantime, it may or may not connect. So I will try not to be distracted by that. But how appropriate for today's lesson, right? Now, and, and perhaps it's initially because we share a name that I have always thought that Martha gets a bad rap in this in the traditional interpretation of this story in Luke. So I was delighted to find in my reading uh, for today's sermon uh, that I'm not the only one who thinks that way. I always like it when people, other people think the way that I do, when it confirms what I suspect, especially when it comes to reading the scriptures. And I think, oh, see, I'm not the only one. Okay. So there is a, a, an author named Bonnie Thurston who wrote a book called Women in the New Testament, and I don't have that book, and it sounds like a really interesting book, but she points out two things. One, she says, this story represents clear and convincing evidence that women were active leaders, active as leaders in the early stages of the Jesus movement, we might call it. Because, you know, of course, they didn't call themselves Christians initially until after Jesus' death and resurrection. So, because here in this story, we see women who are, I, number one, identified by their own names. And, you know, there are a lot of places in the scriptures where women are not identified by their names because they were considered property of their husbands or their families, the, the, the males. Uh, usually that's how people are, the women are identified in their, by their relationship with a, a male. Uh, and not only that, but they host Jesus in their home. Martha is hosting Jesus. Uh, and, and so they're not identified as the sisters of Lazarus, which would have been appropriate because they were the sisters of Lazarus, who you may recall from another story where Lazarus has died and... Uh, and Jesus goes and raises him from the dead in the Gospel of John. But rather, Luke says, a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. That's interesting. And in the ancient world, in Jesus' time, that would have been very unusual. And, and Luke comes from a different perspective because he's Greek. And in some ways, the, the Greek culture was a little bit more open uh, than the Hebrew culture, the Jewish culture at that time. Um, but only under, under very specific, certain circumstances were women legally allowed to own property. Uh, and very few women ever met that criteria. 
So here we have a home that's identified not as belonging to their brother Lazarus, but to Martha. Uh, but she, in this story, is the, the one who is sort of the shunned and scolded sister. Um, and so, so that also, in and of itself, should make us pause to think about what that all means. Now, I, I can't imagine that, that Luke, as the author of this gospel, provided that detail unintentionally, because he was very intentional about what he included, and as the scriptures got passed, as the gospels got passed down, those who followed Luke and kept writing them down thought this was important also. So what might Luke be telling us about Mary and Martha through his very careful wording? Now, another thing that's interesting is in spite of um, a lot of uh, history throughout the centuries of people interpreting what this scripture might mean, this isn't really a text that, that pits housework against study <laughs> or, or even doing works, or as the traditional term, works righteousness against grace. That would be a Lutheran way of, call, of speaking about it. Um, and because actually there's not even a reference to an elaborate meal being prepared or served. That's what we have in our minds. That's what that tapestry depicts is there's some food and beverage being served. But there is no actual mention of that in the scripture. And in the Greek, Luke uses a very technical term uh, to describe what Martha is doing, what her work is. Uh, and in, in our version, that's described as many, many tasks. But um, this author, Bonnie Thurston, provides a little more insight. She says that Martha is distracted uh, literally by much serving much serving uh, and the greek word is diaconate the diaconian it's been a long time since i looked at any greek diaconian but as a diaconal minister you probably know what that word is about trudy um, and that word is used in other places talking about those who serve in ministry uh, and it's not really the kind of it's not like about waiting on tables or serving somebody a meal. It's not that kind of serving. Um, it's, it's about participation in leadership and ministry on behalf of the community. And Luke also wrote the, the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And six out of eight times in the book of Acts, it talks about that word is used in leadership positions of the early church. Uh, and, uh, and in proclamation of the gospel. So when somebody was a diaconal servant, um, they were le leaders and preachers. And so that's interesting that Luke uses this word in relation to what Martha is doing then. Um, you know, so is her serving a domestic task of get, serving food? Not necessarily, and not according to the traditional, the translation of the Greek. It's an act of ministry, servanthood. It may be that Martha is distracted by much ministry. And, and when I read that, I was just fascinated by that idea. I had never heard that interpretation before. And this is also a new idea for me. I read that, and I, this is what I relate to also, the core problem that Jesus identifies with Martha in this story is not that she's busy, it's that she is in an uproar. And that's what the Greek word really sort of, uh, and it's mm, therubes, therubesane, I did take Greek when I was at Yale Divinity School, but that was a very long time ago. So, um, but it comes from a noun, therubos, and probably nobody's going to correct my interpretation, my pronunciation anyway. But the, the word comes from the noise of a stirred up crowd. Now, if you can imagine a mob of people making a racket, uh, like at a concert or at a large gathering of some kind, that's kind of the tizzy 
we might say that Martha was in. She was in an uproar. Uh, and uh, she's just overwhelmed and distracted by everything and distracted from what really matters in those moments. So she's just, you know, kind of saying, oh, Lord, make her help me, which I think is kind of a funny thing that she said. <laughs> but, but haven't a lot of us had moments like that where we've been in an uproar because we're just so distracted by all the things that we have to take care of? And certainly as I have been in the process of moving, my family can tell you I have been in an uproar more than once. And it's, it's a matter of being overwhelmed and not being able to find the balance at that moment. And that's what was happening to Martha. I mean, we can understand she had a house full of people, Jesus and his 12 disciples and anybody else who happened to be tagging along. And so she felt she wanted to provide good hospitality because that was their culture, number one. And that was her nature. And she, as the oldest or the, then the householder, wanted to be sure that everyone was comfortable. So we can understand how she could be, get to be in an uproar over that. And you know, Jesus isn't really pitting these two sisters against each other, although probably felt like it to Martha when he said, just leave Mary alone. She's doing what she needs to at the moment. Um, he didn't say that what Martha was worried about wasn't important. Uh, he said, yeah, you're distracted about a lot of things, but, but this is what's needed. You need to listen. If she wants to serve, if Martha wants to serve from her heart and soul, first, she needs to listen. Let go of those distractions, quiet the noise of the mind, the uproar, leave it. Just breathe, we might say today, and listen. And then once Martha has done that, then she will be able to serve better and more deeply and be better connected with the people around her. A number of years ago, and I've lost track of how many, I, I took a course in our annual conference on active listening. And when I signed up for it, I wasn't really sure what that meant um, when I was invited to participate. And it was really eye-opening for me. During the course, we discussed the fact that many people don't know how to listen. Um, that uh, I discovered I didn't really know how to listen very well at times. And that may resonate with, with some of you. For one thing, many times people interrupt each other. Um, I Sometimes when I get excited about what I'm saying, I do that myself. It drives me crazy about other people when they do it <laughs> and about myself when I do it. Uh, they say the things that really irritate you about someone else is what irritates you about yourself as well. And, and in this case, it's definitely true. Um, I, I don't mean to be rude. It just happens sometimes. Somebody's talking and I'm like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they haven't finished their sentence yet. I was like, sorry. But another thing that happens, and to me, sometimes, we don't always give full attention to what's being said because we're thinking of what we want to say next. Um, especially if I'm thinking, well, this is a really good and important point that I want to bring up. And, but their person's going on and then I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so I, what I want to say is da 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 and then I've gotten distracted by myself um, because I want to focus on what I'm about to say when that person stops talking. That happens sometimes at meetings. <laughs> but we haven't had any meetings, so you know I haven't done it to you yet. Yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. Later. Wait till after after service today. No, I'm I'm going to practice my active listening today. Um, now, and sometimes, and this is true for a lot of pastors or people in the helping professions, we listen with the intent of giving advice, or or those of us who think that we know a lot of things. 
because we, you know, we have some life under our belt and we know some things, right? And so we listen thinking, okay, well, as soon as they're done, I'm going to tell them how to fix their problem. Mm. And, uh, and so, I, and as a person, as I said, in a helping profession, that really is a, a professional hazard, an occupational hazard. Um, sometimes people don't want advice. And so I have tried to learn not to do that, but it's hard sometimes, especially if I think that I know how to fix their problem. I do sometimes with friends say, uh, t tell them I'm, I'm about to give them some unsolicited advice. So they know that I'm aware that I'm about to do something they didn't ask for. Um, and thankfully my friends are gracious enough to accept that. Whether or not they follow my advice is another question. Um, but uh, so in, in active listening, we are challenged to give the other person a hundred percent of our attention, which is a challenge in and of itself. But, but you know, to look at them and to acknowledge what they're saying, not to say anything except maybe mm hmm, mm hmm, so that they know that you're following along, uh, and then. Try to set aside our own thoughts at the moment, which is also hard, uh, and to not speak over that person, but to let them finish their thought. And then not to give advice when they have completed their sentence, but just you know, to say that's, that's really interesting, or would you like to share more about it, or there are different counseling techniques uh, to, to, to use. Uh, um, to ask somebody to get more information from them or so or acknowledge that you have heard what they said because people need and want to be heard especially because we live in this culture where people don't really listen active listening is a gift that we can give others but it's a challenging gift and it's one that I know myself that I struggle with sometimes because my head is in an uproar, because I'm thinking of too many things, or because I think I have a good answer for their problem, or whatever it might be. So to quiet the noise in our heads and let go of that uproar and just breathe and focus, that really is a gift that we can give to others. And I think it's something that really is sorely lacking in our world. So you might remember I said last week we were having a, a short series on what it means to live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So what does have, what's this have to do with discipleship? Well, we'll go back, circle back to Martha and her service to others. Discipleship is about sharing the love of Jesus Christ through our actions and through our presence. It's about transforming the world through what we say and do and I will always repeat this to you that I believe each and every one of us makes a difference in the world we might not think so and we might think but I hardly even go out of my house <laughs> but we still make a difference to the people around us to the people whom we meet who are in service industries, for example, working in grocery stores or at toll booths or wherever it might be, um, waiting on our tables, we make a difference. It might be small, it might be a passing thing, but we still make an impact. This lesson from Luke reminds us, well, first of all, that women were in leadership. Uh, and involved in the spiritual leadership and in service right from the beginning from when he was there among the, them and you know again the me, the men were named as the disciples but there were always women who were there supporting him and working with him and serving him yes but we know that they were there with him and they were the last at the foot of the cross they were first at the tomb and they were leaders in the early church after that. Now, that may seem like a no-brainer, especially to a church that has had women pastors, but we know that there are other denominations that do not accept women in leadership positions. 
Uh, and uh, you know, I, I, when I lived in Delhi, upstate New York, in the Catskills, there, there was a church down the road that said, we welcome everybody. But they didn't really, and they did not believe that women should be pastors. And so it, it was awkward to be trying to do ministry together in, in, with those other churches because there were several of us women pastors who knew that our leadership was not really accepted. It's, and, and people use the Bible, of course, to justify that. Well, Jesus didn't name any women as his disciples. Except that the women are there in the scriptures. If you read the scriptures carefully, you see. And St. Paul talks about women leading in the early church. We live in a world that even today where women's contributions are still dismissed or they're overlooked or sometimes their ideas are stolen. Uh, and and uh, and so we need to be reminded, and sometimes we need to remind others. Uh, Mary and Martha um, remind us that they were in the inner circle among Jesus' followers, uh, and and even he called them his friends. I know that's a pretty big deal. And so Jesus' inner circle included women. So if you are if you are called to serve, then don't be afraid to respond. That's one of the lessons here and throughout much of the gospel and the New Testament. And, and the second thing is in order to be good and fruitful servants, um, we have to take the time to listen. Take the time. We start by listening to Jesus, um, by reading the Gospels. That's where we, that's our main source for learning about Jesus. And we need to spend time in quiet prayer, not always talking, because a lot of my prayers, I'm babbling at God. And I'm sure God's going, yeah, I know, Martha, I know, Martha, Martha, I know. Those of you who are of a certain age, remember the Brady Bunch. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Well, yes, I got that a lot as I was growing up. And it is often appropriate. Let go of the uproar of the world. Let go and separate yourself from the noise around us. And, and, and sometimes that means we have to close ourselves off in a room by ourselves and listen. And the third thing I, I think is important is that we listen to one another, uh, and that we open our hearts and minds to those around us and, and share that gift of ministry, um, the, or it's the ministry of presence. And we talked about that last week, talking about being a neighbor and just being, a, being with others, being a friend, being a shoulder to cry on, being a kind person in a world of unkindness. Um, take the time to just be with others and acknowledge people by actively listening to them because people need to be heard. People want to be heard. People want to feel like they matter in a world that seems to pass so many people by. That it really means a lot to people. And we show our love by truly listening to others. And so we begin here in this congregation, and I don't know you well enough to know how well you listen to one another. So I guess we'll find that out. And you'll find out how well I am working on my active listening. <laughs> and and I, I promise you I'm going to keep trying. I'll keep working at it. That's where we begin, but then we move out from here and we practice it in our own families, which sometimes is the hardest proving ground of all. Uh, and then we go beyond to our neighborhoods, to those who are around us. And just even acknowledging other people's presence by waving at them as we drive down the street. That's acknowledging another person's presence. And I look forward to hearing your stories and, and your concerns and your celebrations. I, um, it's going to be a, a fun time of listening together. Um, and, and then, because we are listening, from our listening, 
we discover the needs around us or even in our own families and among our friends so that we can reach out if they want it with help or at least with hope and with love we respond as Christ's servants putting our faith into action but not in ways that are obtrusive or unwanted we can't force our well we shouldn't force our help on someone uh, and it's good and important to remember that it's but it's hard sometimes so where are you being challenged by this story of Martha and Mary what changes might you make in response to it do we need more balance in our listening and our doing I know sometimes yes I do and do we need to work on our listening skills as I've already confessed <laughs> yes that's a constant thing of trying making sure I am really listening and biting my tongue when I want to say something that I don't need to how will we put our faith into action today or this week in the days to come my prayer is that we will all be blessed as as we place ourselves at the feet of Jesus listening and then rising to go to love and serve others as Martha and Mary both did and to love and serve others as Jesus did amen in our prayers today uh, we want to remember all of those who are on our prayer list which is on the back of the bulletin um, I, I saw Ray the other day and he said he and Sue have been battling colds but they've been testing and testing and testing and they don't have COVID so that's a good thing but they also he said I didn't we don't want to come and sit in church and cough and then have everybody looking at us like are they sick so um, they are at home today he has been working in the yard though that's where I saw him outside working uh, so we keep Ray and Sue in our prayers are there other prayer concerns that you would like to share this morning Yes. I'd like to, uh, to ask for prayers for my brother Mark, who continues to struggle with depression and anxiety. Mark, who is struggling with depression and anxiety. It's been a very difficult few years, especially for people with depression and anxiety. It's, so certainly our prayers are with him. Yes. Uh, I'd like to pray for my your granddaughter has COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. And and what is her name? Elaine. Elaine. Well, we pray for Elaine with COVID. We hope that she will recover quickly. And we pray for all of those who have COVID because people still are continuing to, to get sick. Uh, my brother and sister-in-law just are getting over it or have gotten over it now. But. Yes, Mary Lou. Uh, I, I'm going to pray for me. I am having great difficulty with the nerves in my legs. And, uh, it's very difficult to get around. Okay. All right. So prayers for Mary Lou. Um, I have a very big test next week. A big test coming up. Okay. This coming week or the week? This coming, this coming week. Okay. Well, our prayers are with you. And it's, it's a challenge for somebody who likes to be as active as you. Um, when you can't get around the way that you want to. And I think that's probably true for you too, right, Robin? Mm -hmm. Who is having knee problems. Um, yeah. Our prayers are with you also. Any others? A joy is a good thing. Last night at 1034, we started a new generation in our family. Oh. The next generation. Congratulations. And you, baby Jackson, weighed in at 10 pounds. Five Ten pounds, five ounces. Ow, oh, and yeah. <laughs> oh, the poor mother. <laughs> wow. And so, that who is that in your family? Okay, so that's on the hair side. Okay. Um, so it would, it would have said that. 
All right, never mind. <laughs> well, congratulations, and then uh, mom's doing okay after that. <laughs> yes, no, and I, I never physically gave birth, but even just imagining that, 10 pounds is big. So, yikes, but uh, that's great, and congratulations to you. And great to have you here. And uh, did I see another hand? Yes, okay, thank you. Prayer for our granddaughter, Crystal. For Crystal. For- Prayers for Crystal, your granddaughter. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all of the many blessings of this day, especially the opportunity to be together, to worship and praise you, to know that we are united with those here in this place and with those all over the world in praying and singing and being united in Christ. We pray to you for one another. We pray for our families and our friends. We lift before you all of those who are on our prayer list, those whom we have named aloud today, and those whom we name in our hearts silently. We pray for all in need of your healing touch, your hand of comfort and peace. We pray for those who are struggling in their lives. We pray for those who are in need of direction and guidance. Oh God, we live in a very noisy world. Even when things may be silent around us, the noise in our heads can still be so distracting. And they might be things that we are legitimately concerned about. Health concerns for ourselves or our loved ones, the conditions of the world around us and in our nation, concerns about things that are happening you know, with our families or our friends, worries about jobs or homes or oh so many things it's not that you don't care about those things god you do but you ask us to stop to take a breath to listen to you to try to calm the uproar in our minds and in our hearts we pray that you will help us do that And for those among us who are able to do that easily, we celebrate that. And we thank you that we have those people as models in our lives. Oh God, we do pray for a world in need, for a country in in continued turmoil, for a pandemic that just won't quit. These things are disturbing, oh God. But we thank you that you still are at work in ways and in places that we do not see. We pray for those in the medical field, for those who are first responders, for those who work in hospitals and nursing homes and healthcare centers and in all of those places who have given their all over the course of these last two plus years We thank you for scientists and people in the medical field who are finding vaccines and 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 ways of treating people with COVID so that they are able to become well more quickly but we know that there are still many who are struggling who are very ill who are even those who are still dying from this disease and with God we we pray for all of those who are grieving, especially from from this kind of a loss. We want to live in a world where we are free to go out and be and do and, and get back to some kind of normal. And that may come, it will come, but it's hard to be patient, God, you know that. And so we pray that you will help us to keep making good and wise choices for ourselves and for those around us. And God, we thank you most of all for Jesus. He loved his friends so much, 
and he wasn't afraid to tell them when they were a little bit off track, like Martha, like Simon Peter, like James and John. He sometimes had to say things that m might have felt like they put him, he put them in their place, but he was guiding them so that they could be more faithful, better servants, find better ways to express love and leadership. We thank you for Mary and for Martha and for all of those who followed Jesus from the beginning because they are the ones that brought us to this place here and now. And we are grateful. We thank you for Jesus and we pray all of these things in his name, joining in the prayer which he taught his followers, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship by offering our gifts to God. Because we trust in your never-ending love, gracious God, we offer not only our thanks, but our gifts, knowing that what you have done in the past, rescuing the lost, healing the broken, feeding the hungry, loving the poor, will continue to be accomplished through our gifts. Bless all that we offer to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Our hymn of dedication is at number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. serving Christ, but ready to listen. May we listen to the voice of those around us. May we listen to Jesus through the words that come to us from Scripture. May we listen to God in all of the ways that God is revealed. We go in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 